Hi everyone. I know this is a little bit of a change up than my normal videos, but I thought I would put this video here since I'm going in for surgery again. And the reason why is one, I've had friends that have asked me, hey, what do you take for a surgery? Um, really the things you take are kind of the same no matter what kind of hospital stay you're going to have. Um, and then secondly, others have asked me, what would be a good gift to give someone or a family member, friend or family member who's going into the hospital? So maybe this will give you some ideas. I'm going to have some laundry here, but I'm not going to air out all my laundry. There will be no underwear, so you don't have to be too scared. All right, so some of the first things you'll wanna make sure to have with you, driver's license or photo ID of some sort, government issued, uh, your payment, Many times they will require a uh, payment of some sort or down payment um, before they get started. And then also if, a med if you have a medical directive. So all of those are in my wallet. I use a traveler's notebook as my wallet. I'll link it here. If you're curious how I use a notebook as a wallet, I'll post that there. So those are some things that I take right away. I also keep some mints like these on hand. This is peppermint. It can help with nausea, but this is more for my husband than me because he likes to drink coffee the whole time he's there. And if there's some visitors after the fact, he can have some mints handy to take care of the coffee. Um, also, I put, since you can't wear any makeup, there's no makeup, no jewelry, um, no makeup, no jewelry, no contact lenses, um, and no fingernail polish. That one kind of goes back and forth. Not all doctors are the same on the no fingernail polish thing, but to be safe, I have no fingernail polish on. Um, and then I just use plain lip balm. This is very helpful for if you're being intubated because it leaves your throat super sore, your, your lips will be very chapped um, afterwards. So I found that this is very ha handy to have, especially for those exact moments after. So what I'm going in for on this round is um, endometriosis, endometriosis excision and my left ovary being removed. Um, I've had a hysterectomy already um, and I've been in for some other surgeries in the past. This year, I've been in for a few procedures for my GI tract as well because the endometriosis has invaded the bowel. So that's what this particular surgery is for. I'm hoping it's my last, um, but we'll see what happens. So that's just in a nutshell of what I'm going in for. I just realized I didn't mention that. <laughs> um, so that's what I'm going in for. And when I had my hysterectomy, it was during the Omicron variant and it was Christmas Eve. So all kinds of things were kind of crazy that day. It was the emergency hysterectomy and a lot of things were just like shortcutted that day because of uh, so much happening. So I didn't really get to prepare like I could as well for this round. So because of that, Clorox, but I learned a long time ago to bring these with me because one of the first times I was in the hospital was when I was pregnant with my second child, I had to go in the hospital and the man that was there before me had the stomach virus. So guess who caught the stomach virus? I got to be readmitted to the hospital about three days after um, I went home because I had that stomach virus. So I leave these Clorox wipes on the outside pocket. So as soon as we go to the room, I can immediately wipe everything down and it's easy for my husband to find it for me as well. So it's all right there. Another thing is since you can't wear contacts, I have my glasses right here in an eyeglass case. Again, outside pocket, easy for him to get to. Um, I can thankfully read without my glasses, so it's just to see far away. But since I can't have my contacts in, I want to be able to find my glasses easily. And a handy dandy little puke bag. So these are great because if anything happens in the car, you can easily just do your thing 
and then it has these little clips on the side and you just clip the baggie there and nothing will come out. So these have been really great. I usually keep a couple in the car, but since it's so hot right now in Texas, I'm sure the plastic will melt or something and it won't do me any good. So I have it in the bag. All right, so some little things to take for general hygiene, just so you feel good after the fact. I put everything in clear plastic bags because I know usually I'm not going to be the one rummaging through my bag and I don't always remember what container or case I put what in. So I divided my baggies into specific types of items. For example, this two gallon baggie is everything for hygiene. So in this bag, I have dry shampoo, I have some deodorant. Um, I probably don't need these, but I have a bar of soap and I have regular shampoo and conditioner. My preferred face wash. And I always take a new toothbrush. I don't usually use the one that I'm using at home, especially if it's my electric toothbrush. I just take a cheap disposable and this stays at the hospital. I actually throw it away at the hospital before I come home. And then you can get a much smaller one than what I have, but I have um, my toothpaste as well. And it's always handy to pack this way because even right now, with the short amount of time that I've had things in here, something is already leaking and I believe it's my face wash. So I'm gonna have to take care of that. But this is why Ziploc bags are amazing or some type of toiletry bag that is liquid proof because then you don't have to worry about it getting on everything. I also leave these bags standing up next to each other in my bag. So this would be the first one and it's just right here. I do seal them, but I, I leave them standing up so all he has to do is open the bag and he can look straight in. At least that's the theory. We'll see how it works for him. All right, next, um, these are medications. Some are prescriptions, so I'm not going to show those. So pre-surgery, again, with these, ask your doctor. Every surgery is different. Um, these are just what have worked for me personally. So pre-surgery, I start taking Colace. Five, I've been taking it five days in advance, one every day before surgery, and then I amp it up to like two or three a day post-surgery. For me, what's happened every single time is that usually my insides don't start moving again till three to five days after surgery, and then it's extremely painful. So I'm trying this route on this round to hopefully prevent it from being quite as painful. But usually that is what works best for me. I did try the Miralax, the liquid. A lot of people say that works great for them. There's something I'm sensitive to it, I can't hold Miralax down. So it ends up being a worse case scenario for me. So I use that. Also a laparoscopic procedure like the one I'm about to have and also my hysterectomy. I take some sort of gas relief pills. So this is again for post-surgery. A lot of times that gas will go up even like way up here, almost into your shoulder and chest. And it's very, very painful. So something like that um, can help relieve that. And then worst case scenario, if things just aren't moving, then suppositories work wonders. It will make your life so much easier. You don't have to struggle just go ahead and use these. Again, ask your doctor, everybody's surgeries are different and what you're going through. These items I have used for um, bone tumor surgeries that I've had. Um, what else did I have? The, it wasn't a colonoscopy. I forgot the name of what they called it, where they went in and cut out to, I had an obstructed bowel. So they went in and did some stuff there. I was able to use these for that surgery as well, and I used them for my hysterectomy. So just to give you an idea, that's some surgeries that these could work for. 
so I have some extra supplies. They're not always needed, but I just like to have these. Again, some extra ones in case the nurse hasn't left something with me. That did happen one time. Um, some tissue. I don't know why, but it's getting harder and harder to just find the basics in a hospital room these days. Even things like tissue. I don't know if it's because people steal them and take them or whatever, but just sometimes getting the basics in your room can be difficult. So I try to stock and just take some things with me. A friend gave these to me, so I'm taking them with me. I don't know that I'll use them. There's some cotton gloves. These I find really handy and I have a whole bunch left over. I don't really like hand sanitizer as much. I constantly feel like there is something gooey or sticky on my hand. So I prefer these. These are alcohol wipes. Um, and so I'm taking a whole box of those and then toilet seat covers. So those are what I'm taking in here for the hospital room. So if you're at the hospital for another day or two, then you may want to bring your makeup bag in here. Usually for the hospital, I keep it very simple. I just take some CC cream with my makeup sponge and then some lip balm. That's about all I'll use on my face. But in here, I like to throw in my little hair tie. This just makes it easy to get my hair out of my face. I also like to take some earplugs. So these are from Kroger, they're disposable, and then you can replace them with new ones when you're done. Um, I love these things because there's all kinds of weird noises even in your own room from all the machines that they have strapped to you. So this helps me sleep better. Um, and then you can take your other things, like I have my tweezers and my mirror and things like that in here. Um, a little portable mirror is very helpful too, because you may not be you may not be anywhere near a mirror and not able to get out of the bed by yourself. So if you want to apply your makeup there in the bed, at least you have a mirror to do it. Okay, so for what I wear going into the surgery. I always wear this open sweater. It doesn't have any buttons or anything. It's just super comfy. It's a little bit on the lightweight side. This has always been just the right weight for me. It's not too heavy, but it's not too light. Um, and when I get cold, I can throw it over my lap. It's just always been the sweater that I go in with. If I know I'm going to be there a little bit longer, I might take a pajama top like this one. I also have one that has coffee on it, but anyone who knows me knows how much I love my alpacas. So um, this is just easy because there's no buttons. There's nothing to it. No one has to help me with anything. I can just throw it on over my head and done. Same thing with a top like that. This top that I have is like that. What I'm wearing tomorrow is actually a button down. So when I go into the hospital, I usually do wear something like this. Somehow I got makeup on it already. Um, I wear a button down just because uh, it's easier for people to help me in and out of the outfit if I need to after the fact. So if you're going home same day, it might be beneficial to have a top like that because the nurse or your partner can help you uh, put on your clothes very easily. Another thing I get is very stretchy pants. These <laughs> pants, they have been with me through, I can't count how many surgeries. So they're from Old Navy and they still sell them. I'm actually thinking about getting another pair because these have been through it um, and they have been so good for me. So I love these, they're super stretchy. It's a no tie situation here. It has a thing you can tie, but it doesn't really do anything. It's just for decoration more than anything. But it also has pockets. So if I need to stick a pad or something like that in my pocket to take with me to the bathroom, um, I can do that. Because sometimes you're having to hold onto the pole and you're having to, you have all these IVs connected to you and you're trying to get into the bathroom. So these are great. And I have another pair that's similar to that. 
So these are all the items that I'm going to pack in there. And then the items that I'm wearing tomorrow, I'm just going to put on top. Also, don't forget your hairbrush. I like the little ankle socks. Everyone's a little bit different. The best socks are the ones with the little grip on the bottom. If you're going to be at the hospital long-term, I recommend those um, because they're, they're grippy. And as you walk on the floor, you don't slip. Um, usually the hospital lately has been providing those kinds of socks as well while you're there. Also for shoes, I recommend something like these. These are slip-on, no tie. You can just slide your foot in. My sister-in-law gave these to me before my last surgery and they have been amazing. I use them for my doctor's visits, um, around town, whatever. They're just super easy and convenient to use and wear. Let's talk about post-surgery nausea. So, um, depending on how you respond to coming out of anesthesia, for me, it's been kind of a mixed bag. Sometimes it hasn't hardly bothered me, and other times, like my, after my hysterectomy, it was pretty terrible. It was a pretty awful experience. So for that, I recommend having the peppermint candy like I showed earlier, but what has worked best for me is peppermint tea. So I have another one from Bigelow as well. And um, this is the new one that I bought from Twinings. And then yes, this was a splurge item for me. <laughs> I got the little lollipop honey things. You can kind of spin it in your tea because trust me, you end up sitting there bonding for a long time with your tea. So I got that. I also use peppermint oil. So I'll usually rub some on my hand and inhale. Um, you can certain brands. You can also put a little bit on your tongue and freshen your breath. That way it helps with nausea. Another thing I've used in the past are ginger chews. Um, I'll put a picture of the ones I like here, but the chews in particular I found were almost pulling out my fillings. So I couldn't eat those anymore. So I have to get the hard candy version. So the hard candy version of that works great. Um, ginger ale works as well. Um, any of those kinds of things, those are what have worked for me personally. Again, you may be different, but be prepared for some needing some anti-nausea stuff. Another little baggie I carry is something for my electronics. After tonight, tomorrow morning, I'll throw in my little charging blocks. Um, I have my, my AirPods as well. Again, everything's clear just to make it easy on my husband so he can find stuff for me. Um, AirPods, I actually usually throw also into my outside pocket, but I don't know. I'm kind of debating that one. I don't want these to get lost. So I think these are going to go in my purse. But everything else will go in my, because my phone will be in here. Um, but all my cords, my charging blocks, and my iPad will all be in my bag itself. This, I always just sit right on top so it doesn't get squished or anything. This is just my iPad with my magic keyboard. This is great because it sits on my lap in bed so easily, or I can prop it up on that table, that cart that they give us. It props on that just great. So I'll make sure it's charged tonight. And then when it comes tomorrow, it's just going to be on the very top of everything in this bag. Okay, so let's talk about the car ride home. Um, something you might want to have, either rent or borrow, or if you have one already, I already have one. Um, I have a walker that has a seat, so he can easily push me in the house if I can't walk into the house very easily. Um, or you may have a family member or friend who has a wheelchair that you could borrow. Um, a little walker with a seat is what has worked great for us. On the ride home, 
I like to use one of these. I found this on Amazon before my hysterectomy and it's been great. I actually use it for more than just surgery. Whenever I have that bloated feeling or, you know, I've been having a lot of digestive issues, I can put this between the seat belt and my stomach. So this is Velcro and it just goes around the, the strap. So say this is the seat belt strap. This goes on that and then this will just lean against your belly and everything. So it's really cool because this whole thing can come apart. The insides, the stuffing is just right there. And so for example, say you wanna wash this, you can wash it as is, or you can take the stuffing out and wash it and restuff it. it it's just very well made. So I don't think these are like, um, I don't know how to describe them. They feel very handmade to me, um, but I did find them on Amazon. So I think it's a private seller that just makes these uh, individually. They get a whole bunch of fabric and then they they um, they sell them in bulk on Amazon. So that has worked great for me. Tip you will thank my husband for. So. Sometimes there can be accidents in the car, especially on the way home, either throwing up or from the other end. So something very smart my husband did, <laughs> very smart. That kind of stuff can be very difficult to get out of your seats. So he took a plastic trash bag and covered my whole seat. Then we have those liners on the floor already, those laser fit liners you know, that you can just pick up and wash outside of your car. So that part was good. But this was ingenious that he thought of. So we had a dog during my last surgery and dog pad. Dog pad is super absorbent. So if any accidents happen in the car when you're sitting, this will absorb it and take care of it. So um, if you're worried about that for whatever surgery you're coming out of, dog pad works wonders. I guess a bed pad works too. I'm sure those exist, but we, we had a dog, so that's what we happen to have on hand. Another thing my husband bought me, one of my first surgeries years ago, he got this in a, what do you call that? Gift shop at the hospital. And I thought this was pretty smart. So especially when you come out of surgery, that IV is ice cold and I'm always freezing right after surgery. Actually, even right before surgery, I'm usually freezing too, but they, at that point, they're usually putting on the nice warm blankets and everything else on you. Well, if that's still the case, this is nice because it has like a, it's like a poncho with a V-neck. So it can be worn two ways. Either you can wear it like a regular poncho where it goes over your shoulders and you still have access to your arms really easily and it's very warm. But the better way that I love this for is if I'm freezing cold, it allows your partner to put this over you with the V-neck right here, and then they can just throw that over your shoulders without you having to move too much. You can just be sitting in the bed or you can be in the wheelchair about to be wheeled out, whatever, whatever you're sitting in. This is just something easy they can throw on top of you without having to mess with too much. So I really love this thing. It is definitely coming with me. Um, I also usually take a blanket. This I usually just keep in the car so he doesn't have too much to wrangle with since um, there's usually plenty of blankets at the hospital itself. One more thing that I'd like to add here, I'll add a photo right here because it's in my car actually. I use this neck light for a number of things but it is especially helpful um, post-surgery and when you're in your hospital room or even when you're in bed at the house. You don't have to interrupt other people. If you're trying to find something in the dark, you can just click on the little lights. It stays on your neck and you can do what you need to do while having some light. I also use it for crochet and knitting in the car in the dark, but the initial reason why I got it 
was after a surgery and it has been the handiest thing. So for a gift idea, I have given this as a gift to my parents, to my in-laws. Every time one of them has ended up in the hospital, I've given them all one and they have all just loved it. So if there's a number one gift idea that I give you out of this video, it is a neck light. It is amazing. It's very convenient. They're rechargeable. So um, just make sure to have a little charger for them. Mine, usually for the hospital stays that I have had, which are just a couple days, I've had plenty of charge. I've never had to recharge it. Um, but you know, if they're gonna be there for a couple weeks or something like that, you'll wanna make sure they have a charger with it. All right, well, I hope that helped you. If you found these tips helpful, please give this video a thumbs up. Promise, I'll try not to have too many of these kinds of videos and I'll see you when I get back. My Amazon affiliate links will be posted below. Again, those are affiliate links. If you choose to buy, they may pay me a small commission for those, but it does not cost you another penny. It just simply supports this channel. Well, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.